Dear students, now we will be starting the chapter of molecular evolution and phylogeny. Towards understanding the molecular relationships and evolution, we need to know how species have evolved over time and what kind of variations have occurred during this process. So towards understanding this, this chapter is going to help you to build a basic fundamental understanding of the algorithms that can be employed to develop the phylogeny. To introduce you to the topic, molecular evolution is the pressure which helps species or rather forces species to evolve and adapt to the environmental stresses which are ambient upon them. So for instance, if there is a species that is exposed to a new environment in which there is a lot of sunlight, then the skin color of that species is going to adapt to that new environment. Also, if, a, if the same species is sent to a nutrient deficient environment where it cannot find enough food to survive, then the metabolic pathways within the body of that species are going to reorganize in order to economize the use of energy. So such evolution results in changes in the DNA and the proteins. And therefore, the DNA and the proteins have an evolutionary history behind them. So phylogenetics or phylogeny is the study of these changes and the time that it takes for these changes to come into effect. This has led to the uh, creation of domains such as bacteria, archaea, eukaryota as we now know. But how did we come to understand the world that we live in in such a way? It only became possible with the help of phylogenetics. So let's take a look at how our world has been organized into species with the help of phylogenetics. In this slide, you can look at a phylogenetic tree that has been developed. So this tree is not essentially the tree that we are looking at in our world. Rather, this is like a branch from a stem with further diversification as you can see here. So in this way, all the species that we now know such as bacteria, archaea and eukaryota have been classified into these different types. And how these types are related to each other are shown by these branches. So fungi and animalia are linked and are very close. Similarly, others such as alveolata and stramenopis are linked as well. As you can see, the overall organization is divided into three portions, which eventually are called bacteria, archaea and eukaryota. So how did we come to build this pseudo tree? This can only be done by phylogenetics. So let's take an example of a simple tree that can be developed by looking at the sequences. So to introduce you to the trees, so here are the terminal nodes. which are the sequences. So these sequences can be DNA, protein, or even the RNA, and you can look at their relationships in terms of evolution. So here in this example, one and two are related here as shown by C. 3 and 4 are related and their parent, so these are called parent nodes and 5 is related 
to both of them through the parent node B and A here is called the root node. So this is the basic information that a phylogenetic tree is showing you and how these are built will be discussed later. Also, if you want to represent this tree in the form of text, then you can use the Newick notation as shown here. So 1 and 2 here are related by C, 3 and 4 are related by D, and 5 is related to C and D through B. And therefore, you can utilize this Newick notation as a substitute of this entire tree. Moreover, as I just mentioned, the sequences are placed here on top and these nodes, internal nodes, are inferred. So we need to find these nodes in order to create the tree. So there are basically two types of phylogenetic trees. So one of them are the scaled trees and the others are called the unscaled trees. So in the scaled trees, the edges or the branch length represents the difference or the distance between the two sequences. While in the unscaled tree, that is not the case. Moreover, the unscaled trees are only representative of the relationship. So in conclusion, phylogenetics is the study of evolution and studying the differences between the evolved sequences. We can represent such information by looking at the phylogenetic trees and the algorithms that can be used to construct these trees.